Hi, this is Zach. In this video, I'll be talking about thresholding in the context of logistic regression. So, one of the standard problems in machine learning is the so-called classification problem. Uh, the simplest version of the problem has two classes as observations, the positive and the negative one. And you are given new observations for which you know the x values, but you don't know the labels y, whether they are positive or negative. And the goal is, of course, to use the x's to predict the correct labels. So, returning to logistic regression, so far we've explained how logistic regression can be used to predict or estimate the probabilities for each observation. However, sometimes we want a binary prediction. So instead of a probability, for example, the probability that the Lakers will beat the Bucks is 60%, you actually want a number. Uh, yes, the, the, we predict the Lakers will beat the Bucks, or they will not. So one very easy way to get a num uh, yes or no prediction from a pro probability is to use thresholding. First, you need to choose a threshold value t and predict that the events occurred for observations with probabilities greater than t and predict that the event did not, did not occur for observations with the probability less than t. Uh, here's a very small example. Let's say we chose a threshold value of 0.5. So these three observations have a probability less than 0.5, so we predict 0, and the other two we predict 1. If you change the threshold value 0.2, then that changes this prediction, and if you change it to 0.8, then only the last person is predicted to pass. So you can see that there are four possible outcomes of your predictions, uh, and these are basically all possible, all possible pairs of the actual condition and the predicted condition. So uh, the, there's a true positive where you got you predicted positive and the actual was actually positive. There's a true negative where you predicted negative and the actual is also negative, but there are also mistakes when you predict it positive, but actually the answer is negative. So this is called a false positive. Or there's a false negative where you predict it positive, but the answer is actually, sorry, you predict it negative, but the answer is actually positive. So there's something called a confusion matrix, which is a way to visualize the accuracy of a classification method. And it's also known as the error matrix or the classification matrix. What we do is basically to put the actuals on as the rows and the predicted as the columns, and then you see that the diagonal entries are the correct predictions, and the off-diagonal entries are the incorrect predictions. So notice that uh, we mentioned that you have to choose a threshold value, but how do you decide what is the best threshold value? Clearly, the threshold value of t affects the number of errors that you observe. If you choose a very high threshold value, you have more false negatives. But if you choose a very low threshold value, you have more false positives. So when you choose t, you need to trade off between kind of the cost of a false negative versus the cost of a false positive. If, in for some reason, you expect that the cost of false positives and false negatives is kind of equal, then you might choose t equals to 0 0.5. So here's an example where a high threshold value might be appropriate. Suppose that you're writing an algorithm to detect money laundering at a bank. Now banks typically have a very, very large number of bank accounts, and most of them are, are probably legitimate accounts. In addition, when you want to audit a bank account for fraud or money laundering, it's very time-intensive in terms of the staff hours. 
So in this example, it might be appropriate to set a high threshold value so that you only flag and audit the most suspicious accounts because there are just too many accounts to check them all. On the other hand, if we are, let's say, monitoring child abuse cases, obviously child abuse is a terrible thing that when it happens to a kid and it can really damage many kids' lives. So it may be reasonable for the social work department to investigate 10 case, suspected cases of child abuse if just to find one actual case. In this case, we might want to have a relatively lower threshold value uh, so that we investigate all of the cases if they're all of the cases where there's a reasonable suspicion of child abuse. All right, so right. I think I've mentioned this earlier about the confusion matrix. I think the main point is this confusion matrix depends on the threshold value that you choose. Okay, so let's take a look. Here the threshold value is over 5, and this is the confusion matrix. When you change it to 0 and 2, you have uh, more false positives. Well, in this case, the same, but and less false negatives, right? So here are the three kind of forecast uh, accuracy metrics. So n will be the total number of observations, which is the sum of the true negatives, true positives, and the false negatives and false positives. The overall accuracy would be this: the true negatives plus true positives divided by n. The sensitivity, which is also known as the true positive rate, is the percentage of positives that we classify correctly. And this is the formula. The specif specificity, specificity right, <laughs> or the true negative rate is the percentage of the negatives that we classify correctly. And this is the formula. All right, let's do a quick coding demo. So here are the predicted uh, predicted probabilities here. And if we choose to make predictions based on a threshold value of 0 0.8, let's say, because you don't want to tell someone that he probably will pass the quiz if he actually has a relative, you know, has a 70% of failing, right? Of 70% only a 70% of passing, since failing is quite bad. So, okay, let's choose a high threshold value. So all of these with low probabilities would be false, and only these would be true. Let's delete the rows with missing values using the drop NA function. And we can compute, compute the confusion matrix using this uh, using the counts function. So in this case, uh, pass, this is the, tr this would be the true positives, this would be the true negatives, and this one was predict false, but actually they pass, so this would be the, the false negatives, and in this case there are no false positives. Alright, it can be quite and working out the forecast metrics from this is quite straightforward, so I'm not going to do that for you. But you can do it in the lab exercise, which is going to be fun. All right, so what have we learned today? We talked about how you can use thresholding to convert a probability into a binary prediction, a yes or no prediction. We've talked a little bit about how what you might think about the cost of false negatives versus the cost of false positives and how you take into account when you choose a threshold value. And there should now be no more confusion about confusion matrices. All right, that's all for this video lecture. See you next time. Bye.